Hello and welcome to our webinar about new varieties for this year. This is very exciting for us to present this. This program, our new plants program, is something we've been doing for about 40 years. And just to note a few of the logos that you're going to see. First of all, on some items you are going to see our year of logo. We have year of crops for each one of these. An edible, an annual, a perennial, a bulb, a flowering shrub, a house plant, and an annual. The other logos you'll see are those for our AAS winners. Across the top from left to right you see there's a gold medal, a national, and a regional. And then below that is the National Garden Bureau's Green Thumb Award. And just a few notes about this presentation. We have 140 new varieties to tell you about. So obviously I'm going to have to talk fast, but every single one of these plants are on our website under ngb.org slash new plants. So you can always find out more by visiting our website. And I will try to leave each slide up for a few seconds so you can gather some of that information without me having to read it to you. Before we begin, I do want to point out that each slide for the trees, the flowering shrubs, and the perennials do note the growing zones for each of these varieties to help you out. Since we have so many varieties to go through, we will jump right in. First, with trees, we have this Picea pungens gene genie, which is a Colorado blue spruce. From there, we have our shrubs, starting with this Buddleia butterfly gold, which has yellow and white variegated foliage. Then we have another Buddleia chrysalis blue. It is bred for compactness. And please note that both the Buddleia have been bred for reduced seed fertility, meaning fewer seedlings were observed in the trials of both Buddleia. Then we have the banana split Daphne, which has those unique leaves with the bright yellow edges. Next up, we have Hibiscus Summerific Valentine's Crush, which does replace Cranberry Crush. Next up, we have 10 hydrangeas. First one is Cloud Nine, which is a hydrangea hybrid with lace cap flowers bred specifically for the southern markets. The second one is Cherry Go Round, which is a Macrophylla reblooming hydrangea with very intense red blooms. Then we have Let's Dance Sky View, a compact Macrophylla with green and lavender blooms. Followed up by the impressive new Pop Star with those intense blue flowers. Another hydrangea macrophylla is Serenade Crystal Cove with those pink flowers. Then we have Serenade Glacier Bay with white flowers. The Paniculata hydrangea is early evolution, obviously bred for compactness. Then we have another Paniculata, which is Puffer Fish, which has those huge white flowers. After that, we have Tiny Quickfire, again, bred for compactness, so it only gets two to three feet wide and tall. Then we have a Hydrangea Serrata, which is Pink Dynamo, which has a beautiful pink flowers on shiny black foliage. Now we have an Ilex that is a very good boxwood replacement or alternative followed by the Lagerstromia Shadow Magic, which as you can see has gorgeous red flowers, again on shiny black foliage, which sounds like it might be a trend. Then we have this Lonicera Garden Clouds Copper Glow, a nice disease-resistant evergreen with multi-hued foliage, followed up by Physocarpus Lucky Devil, which has bright yellow leaves, nice focal point in your garden. Now let's talk about roses. I would say this and hydrangeas are our two most popular new variety categories. So we're going to start with Rosa Eau de Parfum Bubbly. And this is one of our NGB Green Thub Award winners for its large fragrant blooms. Next we have Rose It's a Breeze, a white flowered beauty that is both tough and attractive as well as being disease resistant. 
Here's another one with just such an appropriate name, Rose Raspberry Cupcake, which looks exactly like little cupcakes that are a raspberry flavored. And guess what? They have a raspberry fragrance that will bloom throughout the season. And again, more disease resistance. Now we have a very traditional rose called Reminiscent Coral, which has large bowl-shaped coral pink flowers and also a nice traditional fragrance. Rise Up Lilac Days is the first ever mini climbing roses from Proven Winners and this one has a beautiful lilac blue color and again a wonderful fragrance. I'm sure you sense a theme here with noting that all these new variety of roses are having wonderful fragrance spread back in, just as Seaside Swirl Blush is another compact rose, this one with a fantastic fragrance, and it comes in three different colors, pink, red, and blush, which is what you see here. And our last rose for today is Top Cream featuring fully double flowers that are primarily white, maybe a slight blush depending on your climate and the zone where you're growing these roses. Now we have two lilacs, one called New Age Lavender, the other one called Pearl Portion. They have both been bred for compactness and only get about three to four feet tall. And the last of our flowering shrubs is this Wygela Venho Verde, which has these gorgeous variegated lime green and bold black foliage with reddish pink blooms. Now we move on to perennials where our first one is Agustache Queen Nectarine, which that nectarine certainly describes the flowers on this perennial. Then we have an Agapanthus poppin' purple, and those are just some beautiful, hued purple flowers on there, followed up by a still be dark side of the moon. And this is another Green Thumb Award winner for its intense black foliage and beautiful purple flower spikes. Going on through the alphabet, we are at the Coryopsis Incredible Swirl, which is great for pollinators. And then we have Delphinium Red Lark, which has a striking coral red color unusual for delphiniums. The Dianthus in our program is Colourpop Pickables, and that is because it makes an excellent cut flower. Followed up by Echinacea Artisan Yellow Ombre, which is an AAS winner. Our next echinacea is Raspberry Beret, features fully double flowers, and as you can see from this picture, they are very prolific with lots of blooms covering the plant. Another yellow echinacea is from the Sombrero Poco series in yellow. This one is slightly more compact than the rest of the Sombrero series. Now we have two Gallardias, the first being Fanfare Showtime, which was really putting on a show with those blooms. Then we have Spin Top Mango, which definitely has some very vibrant colored blooms. Luna Roja Heliopsis has a large number of orange-red flowers. Then this beautiful Hucarella Copper King has very large leaves in varying fall color shades. Now we have another AAS winner. This one is Leucanthemum Carpet Angel Daisy, and it's one of the first ground cover leucanthemums out there. Next is Monarda Upscale Red Velvet, which is a very apt name for the color of that flower bloom. Now we have a native ornamental grass, which is Niagara Falls Panicum, which definitely will fill in an area. Then we have Penstemon Pristine Nightshade with a very neat, tidy habit, followed by Perovskia Blue Set, which is a compact perennial from seed with intense blue flowers. Flock Sunset Coral is named because of the hues of the flowers, look like a sunset. Then to celebrate our year of the Rude Beckia, we have Mini Beckia Flame and Gold Blitz that will bring a pop of color to your garden. For our last two perennials, we have Salvia Blue Bayou, another AAS winner, which has excellent 
winter tolerance. And then Sedum Bright Idea, which is a hybrid version of a similar cedar, but with a more polished habit. Our next category of new varieties are those that are grown from bulbs, carms, and tubers. And the first one is Kala Frozen Queen that has very stunning silvery white and green foliage. Then Colocasia Royal Hawaiian Waikiki, which is not only an AAS winner, but also a Green Thumb Award winner for its unique veined foliage. To wrap up this segment, we have four new dahlias. The first one is La Bella Grande Fun Red and White, which features very bold red and white bicolor blooms. Then we have Crim Silence, which features red stripes on vanilla petals. And here is Dahlia Dutch Explosion, which is a white dahlia with hot pink tips on each petal. And lastly, Pacific View, which is beautiful shades of pink, rose, and lavender. Now we are going to talk about annuals. And first up is Anagosanthus. This is the Celebrations series. This one on the screen is Fireworks. There is also Mardi Gras and Carnival. And FYI, this is also commonly called Kangaroo Paw. Now we have three begonias. The first one is Bionic Pink and known for its extra large flowers. Then we have Dragon Wing White, which if you are familiar with the Dragon Wing series, they are excellent for hanging baskets and containers. And Hula is a unique new spreading series that comes in four different colors. What you see here is the pink version. Now we have Bractiantha Granvia Harvest Orange, and this straw flower is known for its super large blooms. Calendula bull's eye has tight overlapping petals and it makes for a great cup flower as well as one in the garden. We have two new colors of Calabricoa. First in the Super Bell series is Prism Pink Lemonade. Then in the Million Bell series we have Orangina, which is a beautiful orange colored Calabricoa. I mentioned earlier that our annual of the year is Celosia. So our one and only Celosia new variety right now is Arabona Red, which has bushy plants with very large and bright flowers. We have two coleus, the first being Ruby Heart, which is very self-explanatory as it has heart-shaped ruby colored leaves. Then we have Coleus Premium Sun Coral Candy, and again, very self-explanatory as the coral-colored leaves do well and hold their color even in the sun. This Cosmos Apricata has gorgeous colored flowers and would make great cut flowers. If you've never grown eucalyptus, maybe now's the time with this baby blue variety that has very robust stems with upright branches, making it also great for cut flowers. Our two geraniums are two series from the same breeder, the first being Mantra, and this one has dark green foliage with very good branching, meaning more flowers. And the second one is Calliope. This is a cascading version coming in a new color, which is violet. For anyone looking for downy mildew resistant impatience, the Beacon series is one you will want to fight. And this is a new mix called Sanibel. Then we have Double Glimmer Apple Blossom Impatience with those beautiful light pink double flowers. And then we have a new series called Solarscape, which is a New Guinea type impatient, and it does well in sun and look for it in four different colors. Two Lantana for hot and sunny areas. The first one is Bandalista, and it comes in four colors. And then next we have Sundance Pink, which is a robust new series with very large, bold, multicolored flowers. Nasturtium Baby Orange is a new color in this series where the flowers are held above the foliage. This tall beauty is Nicotiana Bronze Queen, named for those beautiful chocolatey brown blooms. 
a few pansies for the cooler shoulder season. First one is Cool Wave Blue, which is a spreading pansy that can overwinter. Next, we have Grandiose Silver Blue, which is a gorgeous color in this large flowered series, followed by Majestic Giants 2, rose colored with a black blotch. Two new pentas for us is the white color in the Beehive series, which is the only spreading pentas from seed. And then we have the Star Cluster Cascade, which has the largest flowers on the market, and it's available in four colors. If you're looking for some early spring color, try the Sanetti series of Pericalis. This is white with a red heart. Now we have five fun petunias for you, starting with Funhouse Peach Melba with some dynamic color patterns. And more color patterns that are fun is Splash Dance Calypso Cherry, followed by Rim Markable that has a white rim around the deep violet blooms. And two Serfinias, one is Heavenly Amethyst Burst, and the second one is the XXL, meaning huge flowers. And this is a salmon colored flower. More fun comes in the form of Sally Fun Blue Lagoon Salvia, followed up by Scabiosa Paper Moon, which is another one of our Green Thumb Award winners. Another heat loving annual is Scavola Serdiva Lilac Mist. This AAS winner is Snapdragon Double Shot Orange Bicolor, which is an intermediate height, could be used for cut flowers, but has gorgeous duo-toned orange-red double blooms. This next AAS winner is Verbena Benariensis Vanity, which is a more compact version. Our two new varieties of Vinca are Cora Cascade XDR Punch. The XDR means that it is Phytophthora resistant. Then we have Vinca Titan Cranberry, which has extra large flowers and a rich velvety color. To round out our annuals, we have two new zinnias. The first is Zesty Orange with very large flowers, followed up by Zydeco, which also is boasting of 25% larger blooms. Now we get to talk about edibles. So let's start with this Allium autumn bee attraction which we like to call an orna edible since it has ornamental qualities as well as edible and here we have basil evie with beautiful dark green glossy leaves and a lot of branching which will give you more leaves for your basil harvest next up is this bean called whopper which obviously means that these are very large uh, bean pods on a stringless bush type bean plant. This red beet named Bohan is perfect if you have less than ideal soil conditions or maybe a wetter area that you want to grow beets. This one is for you. Then we have this thornless blackberry appropriately named Sweet Giant for those huge berries that give high yields. And next up is Godzilla Broccoli, which is the newest king of broccoli with heavy, firm heads. Then we also have Purplicious, and this is a tender stem broccoli, except it has that unique purple coloration to it. And please note both broccolis there for our Year of the Broccoli celebration. Here is a Pak Choi cabbage called Mei Ching, which is a dwarf style Pak Choi that is heat and cold and bolt tolerant. Aranka carrot is an overall fantastic new variety that can be harvested at the miniature baby stage or at full maturity. Either way, you will get a very sweet orange carrot. Marengo celery is an easy to grow celery, especially for people with a shorting growing season, as it is an early to mature celery. Another fast grower, this is Moroccan cilantro with very flavorful leaves and, and delicate edible flowers. This bitter melon not only produces earlier, but also produces smaller melons that are disease resistant. This red dragon lettuce is an oak leaf type lettuce that has deep burgundy leaves. 
this reintroduced heirloom called Champion of England. Sounds like it has quite a reputation to uphold. This AAS winning jalapeno pepper, San Joaquin, is a determinate pepper and all the peppers are going to be ready in a very short window, perfect for harvesting, canning, and freezing. Another AAS winner is Wildcat Cayenne Pepper and this one too is early to mature, perfect for anybody who has a short growing season. AS winner's Sweet Jade Squash is a high yielding single serving size kabocha squash, perfect for anyone who loves the taste of that nutty flesh. Now we have the exotic Sunflower Red Storm Microgreens that will add bold color to your salads and sandwiches. Next up is Tomato Heartbreaker Dora Yellow, which produces adorable heart-shaped yellow fruits on a compact plant. Ruby Dawn tomato is one of the earliest maturing beefsteak tomatoes for those of us very eager to get our first tomato of the season. Shelby tomato was bred with an extensive disease package to produce a larger, healthier harvest. Another one of our Green Thumb Award winners is Tomato Sun Dipper that has these uniquely hourglass shaped fruits perfect for dipping. Another reintroduced heirloom is the Oaxacan Pink Tomato that has a fairly short days to maturity, along with a sweet, delicious taste you would expect in an heirloom. And last but not least is our Zenzai Tomato, an AAS regional winner, which is a high yielding, early maturing Roma Tomato. Now we get to talk about houseplants or indoor plants and the ones we are presenting today for the most part are non-flowering but we do have one flowering houseplant for you and that flowering houseplant is Begonia Ninetta Monbert. So this is a unique modern type Begonia that works both indoors and outdoors and it has very pretty spotted leaves with a blush pink flower. This pretty little plant is the Coeur d'Alene Mini-Me. This is a great way to bring some bold foliage color indoors. And this is a super dwarf plant, so you can put it about anywhere and won't outgrow its space. On the other hand, we have Dracaena White Aspen, which actually can get up to six feet tall and become like a tree. But in any case, small, medium, or large, it will be a standout in any houseplant collection. A late addition to our houseplant new varieties is this Elephant Ear Corazon Aquino. This is a show-stopping alocasia from the Philippines with those silver-tinged green leaves that just give it a unique appearance among your other houseplants. This beautiful monstera can also become a very large focal plant for your houseplant collection. It can get to be six feet or more and each of those dramatically hold leaves can get up to three feet or more. Everyone needs an easy to grow philodendron and white knight not only is easy to grow but has unique variegated leaves again bringing some uniqueness to your houseplant collection. Another variegated beauty is pothos lemon meringue which has beautiful lime green and yellow leaves. Now this one can trail over the side of a basket, up a wall, or a totem pole. Tradescantia pistachio white is another green thumb award winner. The reason it got that award is because of its unique innovation in breeding, heavily white variegated striped foliage, and it's great indoors or outdoors. Our last house plant is the ZZ plant chameleon, so named because the leaves emerge a golden yellow and with age turn a rich dark green. And again, this is a very easy to care for plant, uh, especially for new beginners. Now, before we wrap up for our final batch of questions, I wanted to remind you of a few webinars upcoming. We have Ask the Experts about Seed Starting on Friday, March 10th, then Ask the Experts about Gardening in the Southeast on Thursday, March 16th. 
Then in collaboration with Garden Communicators International, we have a Meet the Authors book party on March 23rd. And then we have the Year of the Celosia webinar, which will be on Wednesday, April 12th, followed up by a fun Ask the Experts about Goth Gardening, Wednesday, April 26th. All of these webinars can be found on the NGB website under the Education tab. To wrap up, and before we go to your questions, just a reminder that many of these varieties have online links for where to buy, or you can ask for them at your favorite garden retailer.